lot is the principle of reason, number two. This principle suggests that reason is the main in principle instrument that I use in ascertaining what is true. Reason is the ability to look at something and to collect the relevant facts about it, empirical or uh, thought ideas, and then weigh those and measure them and, com and, and deliberate over them against taking the idea and applying it to the reality of the world around us to determine if it if there's enough evidence to support if it's true if it's reasonable you could also break this down to uh, reasonable instruments such as the development of a syllogism to see if it if the idea will measure and fit into a logical argument it also is the reason in, in the applicability of day-to-day uh, -day practical activities. Reason is my arbiter of truth. It's the instrument that I use to determine what is worth believing and what is worth holding in, in doubt or disqualifying. Examples of this, for example, would be my daily Bible study. I've been reading the Bible for years and years and years. Uh, every morning I make a effort to read one chapter of, uh, of, of the Bible. <clears throat> Not an entire book, but a chapter. I do that. I'll do that immediately after this Good Life Creed, after, after my Good Life Meditation. It's the next thing I do. And then, then I think about it. I read it. Well, this video is uploading. I read it. I think about it. I read all the fine notes. I've got a, a, I read, I read the Bible in both the King James edition and the New International edition. I also read the Torah when I'm dealing with the old, with the, uh, um, the first five books of the Bible. Um, why do I do this? I do this because I want to understand the, the information, the story, and then I listen to what people say. I watch podcasts. I talk to people. And then so that, because this is a really important claim. This is the claim of salvation through religion. Um, and it's the one that in my Western, Western lifestyle, my Western framework, I think I, I encounter a lot. So I want to have a good empirical base to work off of, and then I use my reason to deliberate over it to come to conclusions. So the claims, for example, let's just deal with one of Christianity. I used to be a Christian. I am no longer a Christian because the claim of Christianity, the claims uh, that are made regarding things like a soul or free will or the stories that are in the, in, that are in the Old and New Testament don't add up. They don't uh, measure... They don't measure in accord with what reality seems to demonstrate, nor do they even seem very moral. So I don't. I reject those things. That's a case where I take you take a, cl a claim, the claim of Christianity's uh, salvation through Christ's uh, uh, resurrection, and put that aside and say that clearly is not true, nor is the uh, nor the nor the foundational claims. Um, that are presented in the Old Testament, the, the foundational stories, Moses, Abraham, the flood. <clears throat> so with, all, with those, the, basically the foundation of that whole apparatus of, of the uh, uh, Abrahamic uh, religions is, is, is eroded away and falls, falls down. And so I can just set that aside. I don't have to worry about that. That's reason as the arbiter of truth has disqualified those from being, being reasonable claims. So I can move on to other things. I still read it every day because it's fun. And also uh, I learn more and also hey, it could be wrong, so I better keep on trying, right? And I don't read other religious texts necessarily. I have but some, but not very many because those aren't the ones that keep coming up in my life. I think I've gone on long enough about reason. I also use it on a day-to-day -day basis, applying it to all kinds of little things, medium things and big things too, all day long. There you go, that's reason.